it's working in cooling mode and just to check to make sure the, the diffusers are, are working. So the controller for this is, is on the wall here. We can see straight away that the time and the date is, is incorrectly set up on this. The building is unoccupied at the moment, um, so the system has been put into a kind of standby mode. The building manager has set this at 30 degrees at the moment. It is off, it won't, won't come on, heat up the space to 30 degrees, but it is worth recommending within our report that the time, date and temperature are reset. The recommended set point temperature would be 22 degrees, so that when any future occupants come in, they can see how it should be set up. I'm just going to put this on so that we can see the units coming into operation. I'm going to quickly drop down the temperature on this so it doesn't go into heating mode unnecessarily. If we can look at the unit now, we can see that the, the blades have turned around a bit further. Now there's cool, cool air coming through there. The housing of the unit is in very good condition and it's, it looks like a, a very new unit. There are no stains or, or marks within the intakes or the discharge grills. So this is our first unit here, and our external condenser unit sits on the outside wall here. If you remember outside, we couldn't get access to the pipework within the condenser because it's literally plugged straight onto this wall here, and the pipework comes from the units through the wall and up into the ceiling void, serving our cassette unit. If we can focus down on the refrigerant pipework at the bottom here, there is minor, very, very minor damage to some of the insulation, which isn't going to have any impact on efficiency, really. But we can't get access to the pipework leading into the compressor within the unit. This means that we're not able to take our temperature readings across the compressor. And we should note this limitation of the survey on the survey notes. Because this is actually quite a small space, we're going to have a look at the second indoor unit here as well, linked to a second split unit on the outside wall. This is an identical system to the first one we've looked at in this room. And therefore, we want to check to make sure that the system isn't oversized. We can run through all the same steps as our first unit. So first of all, we can look at the filter and look at the fan within the unit. Again, as we'd expect, the filter is clean. There is no build-up of any dust which will restrict the operation of the system. The fan casing is clear of any obstructions, and it's very good condition inside the unit. Again, we're going to just put this into operation to check that it is working and it is functional. We have the same issues with the controllers we had in the first unit with the incorrect date and time, and it's set at a high temperature again. All of these points, again, should be noted on the survey notes and recommendations made to correct the control settings. I'm just going to turn this one on again, and again, just drop the temperature down so we're not unnecessarily wasting energy in heating the space. And standing here, I can, I can feel the, the cooler air coming, coming through the unit now. So both of these units are, are operating. As before, we have our refrigerant pipework coming straight through the external wall from our, our externally mounted condenser units. Again, we couldn't get access to the outdoor unit to take our measurements against the compressor. And here, as, as per the first one, we have good insulation on the, on the pipework here. So we, we don't want to be ripping this insulation to try and get access to the pipework to take our temperature readings. So we've looked at two units within this room. And this is our second and third system we've looked at in relation to our external units outside. We have come across some issues with access to the external units, and therefore we've had to look at an additional two external units and two in indoor units 
as part of the sampling requirements of the, of the ignition survey. So all of this information needs to be noted on our survey report. Next thing we need to do here is take the internal measurements of this room so that we can compare the estimated cooling demand against our rated cooling capacities of these two systems. We need to summarise briefly what we've looked at here and the key findings of the survey. We've looked at the external condensers. On the whole, these have been in good condition, but there are a couple of older units which contain R22 refrigerants and therefore a plan for replacement or regassing may need to be looked at. We've looked indoors at the indoor units and there are a number of different ceiling can set units and wall mounted types. These are clean and the filters are clean and free from debris. We've also looked at the control side and there are a couple of issues that we've discovered here. The time and date is wrong on controllers and the temperature is incorrectly set. So the recommendations within the report need to reflect that the controls need to be corrected. Looking at the general condition and environment within the building, the lighting is provided by fluorescent lighting, by T8 tubes, which are an efficient means of providing lights without increasing the heat gain within the space. There are some T5 replacement adapters which could be used to further reduce the heat gains within the building. There are open windows on the facade here which could be used instead of using the fixed cooling system during the spring and autumn months. The building is an old building and therefore the insulation within the walls and with the upper floors and roofs may need to be looked at to see if this can be improved in any way. So I've talked to the building manager about the availability of maintenance records and details on the site about the systems. There isn't anything available on the site and no health and safety file for the building. And therefore, as part of the survey, we need to produce the asset list of the fixed packaged air conditioning systems. This asset register will include the make, model and serial numbers of all of the indoor and outdoor units together with the refrigerants used and the installed cooling capacities. Some of this information may need to be obtained directly from the manufacturer using the serial numbers and models on the systems. We also need to include brief statements about how the system is controlled in terms of temperature and how the hours of operation are controlled, which forms the essential information as required under the air conditioning survey. Producing the essential information on a site of this size may only take an additional half an hour to an hour on sites, plus an extra half an hour to an hour within the office to write up the notes on the system. This needs to be included within the fee for the air conditioning survey.